Right, I thought I'd just uh, do a quick update on <clears throat> where I am um, with this thing at the moment. Um, as you can see from the, the picture there, the bottom end is now finished and there was nothing really major in that. It's just really a case of correct fitting of bearings to camshafts uh, and then um, correct fitting of bearings into this plate. Um, cam timing, um, which in all honesty is, is pretty well straightforward. Um, and then just installation of the adjusters once you've got the, the cam chain on. So that was all fairly straightforward. The one thing that does seem to be quite essential are the use of these two uh, centering tools for the oil pump. So um, the, these um, are shown in the Harley workshop manual and I just really copied their design. Um, but you install them in uh, holes one and two and then put some uh, standard cap heads in three and four and as you rotate the engine you just tighten these up to centre the oil pump on the crankshaft um, and once you've got them tightened to about five newton metres you then tighten the two the other two uh, cap heads to the same torque setting take these out put the two remaining cap heads in tighten that to five newton meters and then tighten, tighten the whole thing up to 13 I sent on 13.5 newton meters so that dealt with that um, there's the yes yeah, sprocket locking tool if you remember from my previous video I made this which I used on the original timing sprockets cam cam um, drive sprockets to release them um, unfortunately as you can see the gap in there is now significantly smaller than the thickness of that so I set to and made another tool this time out of aluminium um, I cheated a little bit because I used the same tooth profile as I'd made the cutter for that block so I made that um, it's off timing at the moment so it probably won't fit but it when, when you get the dots lined up it goes in it's not a great fit and initially when you put these sprockets on initially you tighten them to 20 newton meters and you check to make sure that the sprockets are in line and the tolerance is 10 thou. Um, so you, you put a straight edge across and you measure to see whether you can get a 10 thou feeler gauge and if you can then you need to put a, a different spacer in behind the rear camshaft sprocket. But um, So I did all of that um, and struggled in all honesty to tighten it up uh, because it was moving. But however, with the cam chain on, it actually worked um, quite nicely. So I didn't have to make another one. It sufficed for this job just to get these torqued up to their final settings. Um, so the I think the, probably the biggest surprise out of the whole job, and I luckily uh, in one of the um, if I just move you up to this section here. So, luckily, in one of my numerous YouTube trawls, I came across uh, a video, um, and it, it was either something like JP JMP Cycles, or it was one of the SNS boys. Uh, but anyhow, it was it was somebody who was installing the threaded push rods into. Uh, and the beauty of doing the threaded push rods, you'll see them on the videos, they they bolt crop the old um, push rods out. But that saves you disturbing all of this. And there might be some merit in that. However, I didn't. Um, but this guy was reinstalling and he made reference to valve lifter bleed down. Um, and I'm not going to go into the, the detail of it, but 
the valve lifter cam follower, valve lifter, whatever you want to call it, obviously has a uh, it's a clever thing. It's got a spring in there. It, it's got oil seals in there, and it's got a, I believe, a non-return valve at the bottom. And so I guess what had happened, because this had been released, the spring, it, it I, I assume it allows the spring in the valve lifter to um, expand. Now, when you put the rocker assembly back on and you start to tighten all of a sudden these I mean these put I've just actually nipped that up again those push rods are very very tight and that's nowhere near down at this moment in time so you leave it for 15 or 20 minutes and all of a sudden they're loose again so then it's another you know another quarter of a turn max on the top there before they're, they're, they're um, loose enough to continue. Um, so luckily I'd seen that, because it, I think if I hadn't have seen that clip on that video, I would have probably been scratching my head and a bit concerned that this was tight. And, and my concern is that if you force that down, you could potentially bend a push rod, which is obviously very undesirable. So... That's what I've been doing. The back one is done, so we are we are now complete on the back. Um, that's all torqued down, uh, and really it's sat there waiting for the rocker cover to go on. Um, so the front one, I am now in the process of just tightening this down. And like I say, uh, just before I started shooting this video, I had. Um, uh, I'd done that, so um, I'm waiting for that to to, to um, um, just just bleed down. So they'll, they'll they'll go slack, and then I'll just give it a little bit more. Now, the in reality, that process for the back cylinder, I think I started it somewhere just before Saturday lunch, and I finished it on Sunday lunch. Now, you know, of course, you go off and you do other things, but that that was the time scale that it took to get that the rocker assembly um, torques down on the rear cylinder and when we talk about torquing down because let me just I'll move I'll move you back just hold on a minute right uh, see yeah right because I've left the engine in the frame when you read um, the Harley Workshop manual, it suggests that you require this tool here to, because you can't get a torque wrench in underneath the frame tube and the two fixings or the two bolts there. So they, they suggest that you need this tool here um, to be able to torque those bolts down properly. Um, I've cobbled together this tool here, which pretty much replicates the same thing. And um, I just straightened the spanner out, um, made that clamp arrangement so that I could um, fit it to the thing. Now there is a calculation, if you look on the website, Norbar do a calculation or a formula to recalculate the torque setting because obviously they want to be 29 newton meters um, but if you set it at 29 newton meters and then put this additional leverage in then you're going to be somewhat um, higher than 29 new newton meters and so what I did was I did the calculation and it's something like the the torque setting that you want times uh, sorry, yeah. So you take... Just hold on a minute, I'll come back. Right, so, what you have... There's a big torque wrench. Okay. So what, what you've got, obviously, the distance between the centre point and the 
sort of at the middle of the grip where you're holding it. So the formula is the torque wrench, the torque wrench setting that you want, in my case 29, uh, times the, the length one, which is the original length from the centre there to there, divided by the new length, which is obviously the centre of that to the centre of the handle. Um, so in my case, initially it said 24.6 newton meters and I set it up on the bench with a with a bolt and did a test and at 20 at 20 I set it a tightened the torque up initially at the 29 newton meters that I wanted and then did a test set at 24.5 newton meters with this um, and it moved it ever so slightly so there was still a little bit more there so I backed this down to 24 and redid the test and there was no extra movement and then I did the test at 24 newton meters with this and then took that off set the torque wrench to 29 newton meters and did it with a straight socket and there was no additional movement on the bolt so I've, I've plumbed for 24 newton meters I think that's close enough and, and more probably more importantly by doing them all at the 24 newton meters then you've got an even torque across the whole um, rocker assembly which in my view is probably more important but it is something that really catches you out because as per usual you know you I mean I don't trying to get hold of a snap-on tool is not the easiest thing around here and especially uh, you know we're talking about an imperial snap-on tool um, you can't get one on Saturday afternoon of course when you want one so you, you improvise and, and I can't really see the difference between that oh, it's not shiny and it's not as nice but it did. It, it seems to have done the job. So that's where I am at this moment in time. I want to try and get that last one torqued down tonight. I then just want to run it over to uh, to get my timing marks back, check the back cylinder, make sure that the, the push rods are slack. Then I'm going to get this cover on. I want to get some oil in it. Uh, and there you see now. In, in the time that I've been talking, those O-rings, well, certainly the exhaust one is slack. The inlet is still a bit tight, so I'm just going to leave it a wee while longer. Um, anything else? No. I think that's it for the time being. Um, the one thing that did surprise me is there is no seal on the oil pump so obviously on the original pump there's an o-ring in the face of the pump where it, where it bolts to the to the original cast plate but on this and, and it's the same with both of the tensioners both of the tensioners just bolt straight to the face there's no o-rings or gasket um, it makes no mention of any gasket in uh, in any of the literature that I've got. So that did surprise me a little bit. But other than that, um, it seems to have gone reasonably well. Um, proof of the pudding, of course, is when you uh, strike it up and run it for a little while. So that's where I am at this moment in time. Um, and I'll bring you back as and when. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it.